Hello there, all you chemistry students out there. Guess what? It's finally time to turn all of you into real chemists. This is what chemists really do, and it's called stoichiometry. Well, stoichiometry is kind of a strange word. It actually comes from the Greek, where stoich has to do with elements and metry has to do with measurement. So it's all about measuring, and it's also all about predicting the amounts of chemicals in a chemical reaction. Chemical reactions are a lot like cooking. Think of a balanced chemical equation as your recipe. So if you're going to make chocolate chip cookies, you need some ingredients. You need some flour, you need some sugar, chocolate chips of course, and from that recipe you're going to make a certain amount of cookies. So let's say you wanted to bake two dozen chocolate chip cookies, how much flour and sugar would you need? So you'd go to your recipe. Well, instead of cookies, let's say we want to make water molecules. Our recipe is going to be the balanced chemical equation that we see right here. I'm going to need two moles of hydrogen molecules, one mole of oxygen molecules, remember there's a one here, and from that I'm going to get two moles of water molecules. When we make cookies, we use cups to measure flour and sugar. But in chemistry, the recipe amount is always going to be in moles. Remember, moles is the most important measurement unit that we use in chemistry. So in my recipe, I have two moles of hydrogen, I have one mole of oxygen, and from that I would get two moles of water. Let's say we wanted to double our recipe. I know when I make chocolate chip cookies, I always double my recipe because the recipe doesn't really make that many cookies. So how would we double our chemical equation? Let's say we wanted to make four moles of water. How much hydrogen and oxygen would we need? Well, since we doubled the coefficient for water, we would need to do the same thing for the hydrogen and oxygen. You would need four moles of hydrogen and two moles of oxygen. So if you take this two and make it a four, that's doubling that, you would also have to double the one, that would become a two, and you would have to double this two, and that would be a four. That's pretty easy. But what if it's not so obvious? Let's say I only wanted to make 1.6 moles of water. That's kind of a strange amount. It's not an even number. How much hydrogen and oxygen would we need? Notice that to get two moles of water, we need two moles of hydrogen. We call that a one-to-one -one ratio. It's the same amount, two moles to two moles. Two to two is going to reduce down to one-to-one. -to -one. Well, that means if we want to make 1.6 moles of water, we would need the same amount of hydrogen, 1.6 moles, because we have a one-to-one -one ratio. But what about the oxygen? That's not quite so easy. Let's look at our recipe again. To make two moles of water, we only need one mole of oxygen. Remember, there's an understood one right here. That's a two to one ratio. We can also think of this as a fraction. One mole of O2. Make sure you're writing this down in your notes now. We'd be giving you two moles of water. Notice that's one half. We could also flip that around. We could say two moles of water requires one mole of oxygen, or O2. Two to one ratio. So what this fraction is saying is that for every one mole of oxygen, we can make two moles of water. So if we want to make 1.6 moles of water, all we have to do is take 1.6 divided by 2, and we get 0.8. Now, how would we do this using dimensional analysis? You begin by writing down what you want to make. I want to make 1.6 moles of water. So I'm going to make that a fraction just over 1. Now, Remember the whole idea of dimensional analysis is to get units to cancel. I'm solving for moles 
of oxygen. That's what I'm solving for. I want to know how many moles of oxygen I'm going to need to make this 1.6 moles of water. I want to cancel the moles of water, so that has to go on the bottom. Now, what do I put here? That's where I put my mole ratio, or in other words, the coefficients in the balanced equation. The moles of water I get from the equation right here. So I'm going to put a 2 there. And then remember we have an understood 1 right here. That's going to go there. So moles of water cancel. I'm going to multiply everything across the top. 1.6 times 1 is 1 1.6 moles O2 over, well, what's left? 1 times 2 is 2, and there are no units on the bottom, so I just put a 2 here. Now I'm going to simplify. 1.6 over 2 is a division problem. 1.6 divided by 2 is 0.8. Now, how many significant figures did I start with? Go back to your beginning number. There are two significant figures here. So that means I'm going to need to add a 0. 0 0.80 will give me two significant figures. Then I just need to label this. I can abbreviate moles MOL. So there's my answer, and that was easy too. The mole ratios in a balanced equation are the key to solving any stoichiometry problem. All stoichiometry problems use a mole ratio. There are no exceptions to this rule. It is really, really important to be able to determine mole ratios and use them to solve problems. So that's stoichiometry, and stoichiometry is at the heart of chemistry. Let's have you try a couple on your own. Let's do an example that's a little bit harder. Here's a balanced equation. We're going to have 2Fe2O3, and that's going to decompose into 4Fe and 3O2 gas. What's the mole ratio for iron to oxygen? Hit the pause button and figure that out and write it down. All right, did you say 4 to 3? You're right, it's 4 to 3. What about the mole ratio of Fe2O3 to O2? Once again, you can hit the pause button, figure that out, write it down, and then hit play. All right, now this one, you have two possible answers. We can say that it's Actually, there's only one possible answer to this. I'm wrong. 2 to 3. I was thinking of 2 to 4, the um, Fe2O3 to Fe. So while I'm thinking about that, let's check that out. I've got a 2 here and a 4 here. So that mole ratio is 2 to 4, right? Can I reduce that? Sure I can. I can reduce that to 1 to 2. So sometimes you can reduce your mole ratios, and that makes your math a little bit easier. All right, let's try the next example. If we want to, oh, I'm missing a word here. That should say form. Okay, if I want to form 18 moles of oxygen, how many moles of Fe2O3 are needed? Hmm. All right, pause the podcast and work that out. All right, we're back. So how do you solve this problem? Well, you can use dimensional analysis, right? We can write down our starting amount. I have 18 moles of oxygen. That's the O2. And now I'm going to use my mole ratio. I want moles of oxygen on the bottom because I want that to cancel. And I'm solving for how many moles of Fe2O3 I'm going to need. So that's what I'm solving for. That always goes on the top. So remember what you're solving for goes on the top. Now I've got a coefficient of 3 in front of the O2 in the balanced equation and I've got a 2 in front of the Fe2O3. So you always use your coefficients in the balanced equation right here in your conversion factor. And if they can be reduced, you can certainly reduce those. All right, 18 times 2 is 36. And 1 times 3 is 3. Now we reduce that, or divide. 36 divided by 3 is 12. And I've got two significant figures, so I'm good there. And it's going to be moles of Fe2O3. 
three labeled on my answer. Always label your answer. That is very important. We don't want any naked numbers, right? 12 moles of Fe2O3. So if I want to make 18 moles of oxygen gas, I need 12 moles of Fe2O3. And if we were in the lab and we were using grams, we could easily change these moles to grams by multiplying by the formula mass of Fe2O3. You learned how to do that back in Unit 5. So you'll be doing some of that later in this unit, especially when you're in the lab. Let's do one more. If we start with 0.5 moles of Fe2O3, how much O2 will form? Okay, we're solving for moles of O2. So our starting amount is 0 0.50 moles of Fe2O3. Make sure you label everything, no naked numbers. All right, now I'm going to use my coefficients. I want the moles of Fe2O3 to be on the bottom because we're canceling that. And I'm solving for moles of O2. That goes on the top. All right, put in your coefficients. There's a 2 in the balanced equation for Fe2O3. And there's a 3 in front of the O2. Notice this is reversed from what we did up here, and that's because we want these units to cancel. We're solving now for moles of O2. We're solving for something different than we did before. Okay, now we do our math. 0.5 times 3, that's 1.50. 1 times 2 across the bottom, that's 2. 1.5 divided by 2 is 0.75. Check your significant digits. I've got two here. I've got two here. I'm good. I just have to label it. So that's moles of O2. Is that what you got? If you did, congratulations. That is right. Yay. So this really isn't that hard if you understand how to do dimensional analysis. You can solve any problem that's thrown at you right now with mole ratios. So when you come to the classroom, be prepared to do some practicing. If you get stuck, ask your teacher questions and your teachers are there to help you through this. And if you keep working hard, you will learn stoichiometry and be successful, and then you'll be a real chemist.